want to know the best months for maximizing your profits in the market? Today I'm going to reveal a powerful monthly performance strategy that could transform your trading. In this video, I will walk you through a strategy based on the historical market performance that highlights the best months to trade. So stick around for a sneak peek at how to use this data to boost your trading results. The financial markets are constantly in motion with opportunities waiting every month. But which months hold the best potential for profit? Just like the changing seasons, markets have cycles. And today we are going to uncover how each month play a role in the trading. History has also shown us that certain months offer more volatility, while others present safer opportunities. Let's explore how to tap into this knowledge. At the continuation, I'm going to show you how to leverage historical market performance data to create a powerful monthly trading strategy using TradingView. Hello there. My name is Catalin. I'm the CEO of Hercules Trading. And today I'm going to show you how to optimize your trading decision using a strategy I have developed, including the monthly performance of an asset. This approach analyzes historical market data in order to identify the best possible months for trading by calculating key metrics like monthly averages, standard deviations, and the volatility. By understanding these patterns, we can anticipate market behavior and make more informed trades in the future. In just a moment, I will guide you through how to use this strategy, how it works, and I'm going to break all the technical aspects from it step by step. For it, we are going to make use of the TradingView platform. So, as we can see here, in this case, I'm with the asset of the SPX, the SP500. And initially, if you go in the indicators, in the trading view, and you write seasonality, we are going to have this script, which is going to be the starting point of, of ours, which is going to break down, you know, each month for this asset, we can decide in this case, you know, the period we run, for example, from 2000, and it's going to tell us how each individual month, you know, has performed. And if we are going to take a look at this data, we can see that at the end, it's going to tell us the averages. This is going to tell us more or less the maximum average profit, which we have at the end of the eighth month. The standard deviation, plus minus, you know, added both to the win percentage probability and to the average profit. And of course, you know, the percentage of how many months we have been actually right with this, uh, with this tool. So I took this and I make it, of course, a bit, a bit more customizable and more powerful. And I ended up with, uh, you know, with, uh, with this part. So basically I'm doing the same like before I'm checking each individual month. And for it, I would recommend in general to go by using the biggest amount of data. For example, in this case, for the SPX, we can go from 1950. And we can see if we go from 1950 that, although it's not properly seen anyway, we're going to take a look here at the data. And we can see that mostly in general, February, together with September, are, uh, are negative, just from the beginning, you know, from the, from the results. And then as well, it seems like May and June and August as well, you know, the, their profits are quite small. So we can see in this case, we have 0.02%, 0.15, 0.25. .05. So definitely February and September should be out of discussion from the beginning. And after that, we should be a little bit careful, like I said, with August, uh, June and yeah, August and June. So based on this now, because we are going to have the data from 1950, we are going to take a look in the last 25 years of data and from this or, or in the last 20 years of data. And in this case, I'm going to put now the testing period from 2004. And once again, we can see that September it's uh, screwed, you know, it's giving us negative anyway. June is giving us a 0%, even though we have 62% of the month in profit. While at the same time, August, the same situation, we have 67% of the months are going to be in profit, but the total average, you know, it's very close to zero. And the February and January keep being, you know, one of the lowest. Now with this in consideration, I'm going to do a last type of, uh, you know, we can say uh, filter. And we're going to go in this case, for example, with the last 10 years. And if I'm going to take a look in the last 10 years, we can see once again, September, 
is going to be our negative month and August together with February and March are going to be our low of month and it seems like December as well in this case. So based on this, you know, I have selected here which one of the months I would like to trade. So in this case, I would like to trade January. I don't want February. I would like to trade March, April, May, June, July. I don't want to trade August. I don't want to trade September, October, November and December. So the way it function is we are beginning of the month. Like, for example, we can go here on the chart and we can see we are beginning of the month. What is going to be the first trading day of the month? By doing this, you know, we can select on the bar flow, so it's going to appear right here. And we can see it's the beginning of the month, like 1st of October. Then we are going to enter, you know, in our position. And initially, the way it was calculated, you know, this value, it would tell us at the end of the month. But I found a way, you know, to improve it even further. So in this case, I'm going to apply into it the ATR, as you already know. And the way of the ATR in this case, I'm using it with a monthly, with a weekly uh, data. And at the same time, I'm going to multiply that by two. You can see, no, by 1.5. So we can see I'm taking, you know, the four lengths, the four candles of uh, the weekly ATR, and I'm going to multiply it by 1.5. So in this case, it's going to be something like this. I can, unfortunately, no, we cannot see it here, but you know, we, we can imagine. So let's say, for example, we are going to be yeah, let's say for example, we take this trade right here on the 3 of June. So we can see on 3 of June, our entry price, it will be 5,283. And we can see that the ATR is close to 120. So that means if I will take 120 multiplied by 1.5, it's going to be 160. So 160. So from this point, you know, let's remove uh, this for a moment. So from this point, if I'm going to take the take profit, you can see that in this case, you know, it was 170. So yeah, more or less, like I said, 160, 170. Our stop loss as well would have been, you know, if we go downwards, 170, 160, 170. So in this case, if we would be 5,115, it would be our exit point. And if we would be, you know, uh, in this case, uh, 5,492, 5,486, it would be, you know, our take profit point. Once we take a take profit point, automatically, you know, once it's being done, I'm going to enter, you know, into another, into another trade. Yeah, so here it was. So in this case, you see, we exit and we did the same candle. I'm going to enter in another trade. And we can see that in this situation, we enter at the middle of the June and then we exit here a bit negative because it was the last day of the month, you know. So at the end of the last, uh, of the last month, you know, we're also going to, um, we are going to we are going to exit from the trade and we can see in this situation like for example if i would entry with this trade directly from here to here you can see that we would have a 373 percent profit but in this case because we entry we entry at this point sorry for that we had a 325 and then we lost a little bit in this case for example in this month it's uh, a little bit screw us but we can see from the total profit and we can see in this case that if we are going to take to use the last 10 years of data, we can see that this strategy would net us a 253%. And we can be, we can see that it's slightly superior, you know, to the buy and hold. In this case, the buy and hold, it would be like 200%. And if I were to not use the risk management, you can see that it's going from 253 to 230, while at the same time, you know, it is going to increase our, uh, our drawdown. So it's definitely, you know, safer by using this value. However, if we were to take into account, you know, the last, uh, let's say, for example, the last 20 years, we can see that in this case, the value is it's even better. So we would have a 700% profit compared to the buy and hold, it would be 400. We almost make a double, you know, of what it would be the, the buy and hold. Uh, so yeah, you know, we can see that we can manage, you know, like, let's say, for example, let's take the last four years the last uh, 2020 and we can see in the last four years you know it's actually it was actually even better the same we would make 112 percent compared to the 76 so i'm going to use you know in this case the, the the strategy it's adapted to the to the sp500 market but at the same time we can use it with the nasdaq so let's go for example into the nasdaq and we can see the same situation we can also improve it a little bit 
because for example if, if we are going to take the entire history of the nasdaq we can see that in this case the february it's screwed and september so and, and december so february september and december i'm going to lose uh, september and december and we can see that in this case our performance is going to be even better we will have a total of these 20 years of 2.9 thousand percent compared to 400 which should be buy and hold if you were to take the last uh, four years we can see as well we would make 184 percent compared to the 125 so like i said this strategy is very very powerful you know um, in terms of the investment as you can see it's definitely better than just buy and wait you know on your uh, on your trade uh, yeah so at the same time you know if you are going to manage and filter it even better like for example you can use a volume indicator or some moving average or things like that you can make it you know even more powerful you can play a little bit further you know with the with the risk management and you can see you know by by finding a proper value you can get a higher or a lower return you can see in this case if i will use the 2.5 yeah so in this case if i will use 2.5 times the weekly atr with a length of four candles you can see that i increase it to 200 percent at 27 drawdown compared to what we had initially a 184 so yeah we can also do that and yeah we can see that we almost double you know the buy and hold in the last four years so yeah i definitely recommend you know and i believe it's a very very powerful tool that especially if you are in the investment or the swing type of trades is going to help you so yeah with this i'm going to i'm going to end it here the next time i'm going to use uh, this tool and i'm going to apply it you know for the commodities together with other indicators because initially you know this idea i took it from the commodities market because they are the most seasonal of them all but as you can see it works with the stock market as well it works with the crypto market as well and i'm not so sure about forex but i do know that commodities crypto and stock market is going to work so yeah uh, thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed this video thank you for for being around and please subscribe and see you next time thank you bye bye